Hello. Uh, we consider the task of visual place recognition, where the goal is to recognize the place where a given image is taken. We would like to input the image into the search box and get its location as the output. Despite the existence of GPS, this task is important in many applications. For example, historical imagery does not have GPS. The accuracy of GPS is often insufficient for augmented reality or robotic navigation. And many personal photo collections still don't uh, contain location metadata. Place recognition is a difficult task due to many challenges. Lighting changes, such as images taken at different times of the day or the year. Changes in camera viewpoint. Occluders and ambiguous objects, such as people, cars, trees and the scale of the problem, where we are interested in locating a photo anywhere in the city of the world, or the world. The most popular approach is to cast place recognition as visual instance recognition. Namely, the world is represented as a set of geotagged images. Uh, we then design an image representation extractor function, which provides a mapping from an image to an image representation space. All database image representations are extracted offline, and now given a new image, we extract its representation, find the closest database representation, and transfer its location. Interestingly, local feature-based methods still perform the best on this task, where state-of-the-art approaches start by extracting local descriptors, such as SIFT. These are then aggregated using bag of words, Vlad, or Fisher vectors to obtain the final image representation. There are many improvements to this basic pipeline, such as spatial verification and query expansion. However, not many methods perform learning for this task. Some past work has performed learning, but this is usually limited to learning better local descriptors. However, all approaches either start from hand-engineered descriptors or don't train for the end task of visual, place, uh, visual instance recognition. Some recent work has utilized convolutional neural network based descriptors, but used neural networks trained on ImageNet classification tasks as black boxes without training them for the ins instance recognition. In this work, we investigate how to apply CNNs for place recognition, and in order to do that, we have to address the following three challenges. What is a good CNN architecture? How to get lots of annotated training data? and how to train the system end-to-end, -end, what is the appropriate loss. We start by the appropriate CNN architecture. We mimic the state-of-the-art pip pipeline, where local descriptors are extracted from an image, but we replace SIFT with features computed using a CNN. Then we aggregate the descriptors using NetVlad, a new trainable pooling layer that we introduce. The key point to keep in mind is that unlike previous approaches, we will train this method, the system end-to-end. -end. We discuss the trainable pooling layer next. First, we give a short review of pooling methods for local descriptors. A well-known method is bag of words, which starts by quantizing the descriptor space using k-means. A descriptor x is extracted and assigned to its closest cluster, then noted with the assignment variable ak, which is 1 or 0 depending on whether the cluster k is the closest cluster to the descriptor x. Then, all the descriptors in the image are assigned to their closest clusters. Assignment variables are summed up, which amounts to counting the number of descriptors assigned to each cluster. The counts are then concatenated to form a bag of words histogram. A more recent pooling method is Vlad, where, similarly to bag of words, a descriptor is assigned to its closest cluster, but extra information is kept in the form of the residual, i.e. the difference between the descriptor x and the cluster center or the anchor point CK. To compute the Vlad image representation, all descriptors are extracted, assigned to their cluster centers, and their residuals are summed up and concatenated to form the final Vlad vector. The motivation behind Vlad is that it stores more information about the location of descriptors in the descriptor space than bag of words which just stores the counts. While Vlad works very well as a pooling method, it's in its current form it is not a part of a CNN architecture and it is not trainable. In this work, we introduce a new form of a trainable pooling layer, which we call NetVlad, which will be trainable in an end-to-end -end manner as a part of the CNN architecture. 
To accomplish this, we need to make NetVlad computation differentiable. And the 0-1 assignment variables AK are problematic as they make the assignment operation non-differentiable. Therefore, we replace the hard assignment with soft assignment. In the paper, we show that soft assignment can be accomplished simply by performing soft max over linearly transformed input descriptors. Therefore, we are now able to learn better assignment variables W and B depending on the supervised training data. Let us now consider two local descriptors extracted from non-matching images. Under the standard unsupervised blood, the two image representations can be quite similar to each other as measured by the angle between the residuals, as there is no way of using the supervised information that the two images should not match. In our trainable NetVlad layer, we decouple the assignment variables WB and uh, anchor point C so that the anchor point can be learned to decrease the similarity between the two non-matching images as measured by the angle between the residuals. The NetVlad layer can be implemented easily as in a standard CNN framework where the input is the feature map from the last convolutional layer. These features are then passed through a convolution followed by a softmax which produces the soft assignments. These soft assignments are then combined with the input features to produce the NetVlad vector. Finally, uh, the vector is normalized in a standard manner as for Vlad. The key points here are that the layer is quite simple to implement using standard CNN blocks and that it is fully trainable using standard backpropagation through a directed acyclic graph. The next important question is how to get lots of annotated data needed to train the network. We use a new source of information, the, new, the Google Street View time machine, which provides multiple Street View images for the same locations, taken at different times and seasons. It is a very useful data source as it contains exactly the information that we need to train a network for place recognition. The data contains uh, viewpoint changes, large changes in lighting conditions, occlu occluders and confusers such as people and cars, as well as vegetation. And there is lots of this data that can be used. However, the, only, the data only comes with weak supervision in the form of the GPS. Given a query, GPS gives us definite negatives, i.e. images that are far away from the query. However, images that are close to the query are not necessarily positives, as depending on the location, some nearby images can have no overlap with the query because they are taken around the corner from it. Therefore, GPS gives us definite negatives and only potential positives. Therefore, we need to explicitly handle the fact that we only have weekly supervised training data by designing the appropriate loss and the training procedure. We introduce the weekly supervised ranking loss, where in a manner similar to multiple instance learning, we pick the best potential positive in each iteration. Inspired by the triplet loss, we penalize negative images which are more similar to the query than the best positive is. I will not explain it in more detail here due to lack of time, but I can provide full details at the poster. The key thing to note is that the loss can be used easily with CNNs and stochastic gradient descent. We evaluate our method on two standard place recognition benchmarks, which contain street view images from two different cities, Pittsburgh and Tokyo. I will concentrate on Tokyo as the results are similar on the two datasets, while Tokyo is a more challenging benchmark as it contains query images taken at different times of the day, including the night. We set the new state of the art by a large margin, where the previous state of the art was based on aggregating SIFT into blood, and we beat it by 35%. We also investigate the benefits of training the system end-to-end. -end. Previous work has used off-the-shelf CNNs trained on the ImageNet classification task, but here we show that using these off-the-shelf CNNs as black box descriptor extractors is very suboptimal. Our NetVlad pooling with weekly supervised training beats off-the-shelf VLAD by 33%. We also compare our NetVlad pooling to max pooling, which has been a popular pooling approach for CNN descriptors. NetVlad is clearly superior, and we saw the same improvements for different network architectures, off-the-shelf and trained representations, as well as different dimensionalities. Finally, uh, we test our network on a related task of specific image retrieval, using three standard benchmarks, 
Oxford buildings, Paris buildings and holidays. We set the new state of the art for compact image representations on all three benchmarks. For example, on Oxford buildings we get an improvement from 53 to 63%, which is a very large gain on this benchmark. Uh, there, have been, uh, there have been very recently new works appearing on Archive that obtain even better results on these retrieval benchmarks by using stronger supervision. To conclude, uh, we set the new state of the art on place recognition and image retrieval benchmarks. We introduced a trainable NetVlad pooling layer, which works significantly better than max pooling for place recognition, and can be plugged into, any, in, into other CNN architectures, and potentially used for tasks other than place recognition as well. We also introduced a new large source of information, Street View Time Machine, which comes with free week annotations, and could potentially be used to train image representations from scratch. Finally, we also introduced the weekly supervised ranking loss, which enabled us to, uh, to, use, uh, to make use of the time machine data, and is also applicable beyond place recognition. All the code for the NetLad layer, training, testing, as well as the trained networks are freely available online. Finally, while I take questions, I will play a video with quality results. The query image is shown on the left, and the top result is on the right. The green or red box denote uh, correct or incorrect localization. Note the successful matches across large changes in appearance, not possible using previous methods. All right. Thank you for your attention.